<laughs> okay, vlog, whoa, almost dropped the camera. <laughs> That's why I don't film very much anymore. Uh, okay, so vlog day today, we are going to be doing a little side project for my music instructor, my guitar instructor. He um, busted the USB port on the back of his Akai MIDI keyboard, which is an old school professional keyboard that he loves. Mostly because these keys have real weight and feedback like a, like a piano does, and so he doesn't want to buy a new one. So Phil is going to fix it today. We think we know what's up. Yeah. So let's run an ad and then let's go demonstrate. For those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So this, this keyboard does run, have, have a barrel connector for power, uh, as well as USB. So it's a USB-B um, 2.0, it's not even a 3.0. But if you look, if he's wiggling the cable, show how loose it is, yeah, it's very loose because when he took it off his desk, he forgot it was plugged in, so he torqued the cable sideways real bad, and, and we think broke some of the solder joints in that USB. So if you plug it in and hold it up, it turns on, and then you can see over there on the, the MIDI screen, it's got the inputs on there. And then if he releases the tension on that, it disconnects, as you can hear. And you can see it too. Yeah, but not completely, because it's still on. So part of the data connection is busted in there, and you can see now over there on that screen, the computer's not receiving any. Yeah, the computer's not receiving any data. So we're really hoping that maybe it's just the ground that's busted, and not the four little uh, data print pins that are in the center. But if we have to buy a new plug, we will. I, it'd be here in, in a day on Amazon. I should have got it probably ahead of time. But <laughs> I think we can make this one work because it's still there. We think it's just a busted yeah. joint. So this thing's actually from 2008. It's older than your kids, huh? <laughs> yes, it is older than my kids. Oh my kids God. Child. <laughs> My sophomore and high school kid is younger than this keyboard. <laughs> That's the thing about musical instruments. I love that they just like get old, get cooler with age. Why didn't that happen to me? I know, Sam. <laughs> I think I'm pretty cool. Make sure can you, yeah, can you yeah there's sure. a ribbon cable here. There's a bunch of ribbon cables. Okay, I, I need to help. I'm gonna put the camera down. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Most anti Show them what's inside. We opened it up and we were expecting something crazy. <laughs> it's just a little. It's, I mean, it's 2008 technology, it's right? A little, it's just a tiny little MIDI board. The ground joints right there are clearly fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're all connected. So, so that means the brake must be on the other side. Right. On the top side, which means, yeah, we do have to get a new cable or a new thingy and then desolder this entire connector. Your gun's at 669. <laughs> nice. Is that where you want it to be? It should be fine. I won't focus. Yeah. This is where everyone's gonna yell at us about how we're doing it all. I know. If it works, it was right. Okay, he's using the iron now with the uh, solder sucker, little plunger. It just uses a little vacuum to pull up the solder. Is that the solder right there? It just came out? Yeah. Oh yeah, see it just like... <clears throat> so you get it hot and liquefied. And then you use the little plunger. When he pushes the button, that plunger in the back will, will pull back, which creates a vacuum, and then we'll just pull all the solder up with it. Let's see if we can get this one on camera. So he's got to get it to a liquid state first. You should be able to put it right on the iron. Or just pull the whole bin out. Maybe that was the one that was loose. So I just ordered this 10 pack of USB B ports which are like exactly the same one, to be honest, for $5.99. It'll actually should be here in the morning. So we're gonna continue, well, I, Phil's gonna continue trying to get the port out entirely so we can look at it. The pins were getting sucked up out of it for the small data pins. So we think that because they were broken, that's why the whole pin removed and not the solders. What a concentration base. All right, Phil was successful. He got the port out and we're gonna look at it in the magnifying glass now. Oh, look at that, it's all, Pins are definitely cracked, and one's bent, obviously. Well, they're all bent out. from me just going... But, the, but look at the two that are busted. Yeah, there's three busted pins right there. 
Mm-hmm. But you can see the break point. Yeah. Like that was that was from the physical damage, I think. Yeah. Like of him yanking it out. And Jay was saying earlier, it makes sense that it's all on one side because it was asymmetrical. Like like it, it turned, like it twisted. Because so of the how part, the way the way it's plugged in, right? Yeah. If he just grabbed it and then turned around to Which go. Which is what he did. So it yanked it sideways. Yeah. So that means the outside radius of that arc, those are the pins that broke. And then we'll continue this video tomorrow with uh, the new port going in, which should be fairly simple. And then hopefully we did a thing <laughs> and people won't yell at us and be like, you did it all the wrong way. At, at the very least, look, we have this now, which you guys were mad about last time, okay? So we're not breathing the lead. Don't point it at us. So through the magic of editing, editing, edit, editing, why is editing, editing, editing is such a hard word edited to say. Edited it is really hard to say. It is now the next day and we have 10 USB Bs that came courtesy of Amazon installed. So there's the captain tape on there, which is obviously to protect the traces around the pads that because you can see they're really close. So the tape is to make sure that none of the solder kind of leaks through the other side and then makes its way to the other pads and stuff to bridge things that shouldn't be bridged. But those those uh those are actually really small holes, if you will. Yeah, like this giant thing in the microscope is this for scale. <laughs> so. Yeah, well you can see right there, it's very small. But So we gotta get those holes sort of opened up a little bit, even though we got the solder out of them, to make sure that he can push the pins through. But the nice thing is those two big round pads, like there and there, those are the ground pads, so they will sort of hold the USB port in place, uh, and then he can solder one at a time. So those like wing looking ones on the side, those are the ground. And they kind of push out um, to sort of like pressure fit it in place. And then he's got to line up those four pins. So there's the four data pins right there, which as you can see are not broken, which is exactly the problem with the other one. We'll <laughs> shed some light on the situation. <laughs> but that's the cool part about those, the ground prongs kind of squeezing outwards is that- They hold it. Yeah, it holds it totally in place while you just add, all you have to do is add solder on the backside. Lewis can't get mad at us though, because he said in my video, heat the board. Actually, he said, heat the board. It's probably really difficult for experts to watch. Heat the f***ing board. So it's all melting away. But I like how it just, the solder flows where the, you know, within the flux too. And all the surface tension with the pad. <laughs> it's bone. Oh wow, that's like a professional looking ball right there, boy. There it goes. There it goes. It's an awkward approach angle. I mean, you could just flip the board around, but... Oh, you're good now, you're good. Oh, that's there perfect, that's the best one, look at it. Yep. Okay, if it works, this was my great idea. If it doesn't, it was his terrible soldering. And I also have... Nine more attempts to terribly solder it. Okay, so we're gonna put everything back together in the reverse order that we took it apart. And more importantly, Bill took reference photos of the way everything was orientated. Oriented, that way we know we're putting it back together correctly. So, there we go. <laughs> Look, there's, there's a lot there. of empty- Just leave that in there. <laughs> like, where's my photo that you just, you hear the dinging coming from inside the keyboard? <laughs> and just like that, it's all back together. It's still so funny how empty it is. Like, we expected it to be like a big board or something, didn't we? I did. <laughs> yeah, same. So this program that Phil's using here is just a MIDI tester, essentially. This is just a MIDI keyboard, but... So it takes all the signal outputs from the keyboard and gives you, like, the data on it. So this is how we know if it's working or not, because this keyboard doesn't have any speakers or anything. It's intended to be hooked up to, like, a... Hey, look at that! It works! And it's not constantly sending anything weird. Which is good, yeah. yeah. Modulation yeah. wheel, pitch wheel. Every button's working, all the pads. Move the sliders, there you go. Yep. Nice. Dang, that's crazy. Every single button on here is like a MIDI channel. Yeah. Except for like this section, which controls the actual like thing. Because we already had all the solder and everything. It was $5.99. So it was $5.99 for a pack of 10. And so it means 59 cents for the port to repair it. We already had all the solder equipment and stuff. And now a keyboard that is very long retired that he loves and doesn't want to get rid of, now works again. And I guarantee you, if you took this to an electronics repair place, they could have repaired that, especially with the wiggly port, but it probably would have cost him maybe an hour, at least an hour of labor, yeah. which would have been probably a couple hundred bucks. At least, maybe a maybe hundred bucks. 
And like I was, I was on Jay off camera too, like, cause he was joking that yeah, I could have probably did that. And I was like, I think it was one of those soldering jobs where it looks a lot harder than it is because it's like small enough to look worrying, but but not like <laughs> not like impo like not like you know a freaking micro drone that you're you know you're yeah. dealing with things that are like smaller than the tip of your soldering iron. <laughs> awesome. I'm happy that's working. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. A little bonus video on something that we wanted to get done for my guitar instructor so that uh, we could I don't know I could. Make him happy, because he teaches me how to play that thing there, so I figured at least we could do something we know around here to help him. And we still have the best synth, though. <laughs>